I have a young girl, this is Christina J, who's had an odd heat, only one so far. She'll be 12 months old next month. Well, I can tell you this, right off the bat, before I read any more of this, I can tell you what the situation is, young dog. Young dog's first heats tend to be very irregular. Um, and dogs that have heats when they're eight and nine months, even more irregular. So that's why typically, you know, you don't breed dogs until they're a year old, preferably second heat, because it's hard to get dogs bred on the first heat. Anyway, she has a very small amount of discharge, and then the bleeding, then stop. She is still swollen, our male was interested in her. Are there any preemptive tests that I can have done by my vet? Yes, there are. So the first thing is, is that uh, I would just hang in there and wait. And my guess is that what you'll see is that it'll turn into a full-blown heat where she will swell up more and she'll start to drop some red blood. And if you've got her on a white towel, if she's in a crate at night, or she's got some panties on, you're gonna see some red stains in that. And that'll give you an idea that heat is in fact started up properly. It may be that she does, this is the only heat that she's gonna show on this cycle as she goes back out. And it's the next heat that might be in another four to six months that is a full blown heat. But you can do this. The simplest thing that you can have done is do what's called vaginal cytology. And that's where it's not a progesterone test that's gonna cost you money. It's still gonna cost you money at the vet, but it's probably not gonna be very much. So what you do is, and you can do this yourself, you have to have a microscope. You take a Q-tip, you stick it up the dog's vulva, you spin it around, you pull it out, you get yourself a microscope slide, and you roll it onto the microscope slide, put some stain on it, put a cover slip on it, look it under a microscope. And what you're looking for is eggs, is, the, is cells that look like cornflakes, and they don't look like fried eggs. And they definitely look like cornflakes. Yeah, a dog no doubt about it. A dog that's starting its heat will have mostly fried eggs and some cornflakes. A dog that's in full-blown heat and is ready to be bred will have all cornflakes. It's called fully cornified and have no fried eggs. When I say a fried egg, it'll look like a circular blob with a, with a, with a dark spot in the middle. That's the fried egg versus something that looks like a cornflake. It's fairly obvious when you look at it. Oh, yeah. I remember we used to do that a long time ago. Yep. It's right. pretty exciting to see it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I Kimberly, mean, if you have your own microscope, oh, get do one. it yourself, yeah. Yeah, you can you buy get it off Amazon, perfectly good microscope you? for 100 bucks with yeah. a 400x uh, objective lens, 400x magnification. And you'll you have fun with it. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, well. Uh, well, yeah, I, I had so much fun with mine because I got mine as a birthday present one time. She got a vacuum cleaner the year before. No, no. <laughs> James, James literally bought me a microscope for my birthday gift. I did. And my daughter goes, oh, cool yes and i said good i'm glad you can have it yes that's right <laughs> not what you want to buy your wife for a birthday so birthday. i do have a video of microscopes it's a bit old so these days we have a couple of microscopes that have digital screens on them and i really like those because everybody can see it it's really a lot easier to use now you're in the four five six hundred dollar range but you can buy a perfectly good 400x microscope for a hundred bucks <laughs> And look, they you can do lots neat. of stuff with it. I mean, it's not it's just... not as a birthday present. Semen count. Find out what your semen count is. Well, not you, but your dog. Well, I guess you could be so oh. if you to. But, um, worming dogs. What parasites are there? You need a microscope. You want to find out whether your dog's ready to be bred, you can do vaginal cytology. There's a lot... I mean, dogs got... scratching oh, ear, yourself. ear infections. Ear infections. You can check that what out. Is it yeast? Is it ear mites? Yeah. Dog scratching its skin. Is it red mange? Is it skate? Is it scarpotic mange? Skin scraping with that. Skin That's scraping. a little more. Right. You have to shave the hair off the arm right. and then scrape where that area. And we've got videos is. on these things showing yeah. how to do it. But the, but the answer is, is you need a microscope. If it's if one you're of those things. If breedings with dogs, you've got to have that too. I would. I would. Yeah. Um, okay, Kimberly von Rohn. She's talking about the fine care machine. She says mine didn't come with the paper. What rate it was in? You can go to a one phone site and you can have to register your machine and from that you can get timing charts and they are numbered according to the test kits that you got. They are all about the same, so I don't get too worried about this, but they do vary a little bit. So you can get that. You've got to have a registered machine to do it. Joshua Hart is a good one. I bought a silicone nipple feeding station because I was recommended by a friend. Uh, uh, thoughts are on them and with your thought that you can cause aspiration so I did go buy one of those because we were thinking about adding that to our lineup of things to sell on my British supply and I freaking hated it so this is the problem with it anytime we have stuff on there for sale on our website and we like it 
it's on the website. If we don't like it, yep, we don't put it on our website. So this, it, I thought it was a great idea. Yeah, it was it, a good idea. Here's the problem with it. The first thing is, is that it, it leaks. So the problem then gets is you put milk in it and one or two, it's typically got six nipples on it. It's a cylindrical tower with a hole in the middle with six nipples around the outside. It's all made of silicon. And the idea behind this is, is you fill it up with milk, you put it in the middle and the puppies nurse off it. So here's the problem is that it leaks. So the problem is if it leaks, there's just milk running out. Before you know it, you've got a big puddle of milk on the ground and you can't fix it. And you That's got cold puppies from being wet. So the next thing is, is that the puppies can get rough with it, bite a nipple off, it leaks, and then you have to throw the thing away. The next thing is, is it doesn't take very long before the milk is cold and the puppies won't nurse on it because they're not used to drinking cold milk. Um, uh, next thing is they knock the thing over and the whole thing spills. I, I, I just didn't have any luck with it. So I have actually done a fair amount of work on building an automatic nursing station that heats the milk automatically that has replaceable nipples. I spent a lot of time on it. I still don't have anything that that I'm I, is is a manufactured. Yeah. Well, it's not a manufacturable item yet, so I don't know whether I'll ever get there. Some of this comes down to you got to do this when you've got puppies around. We are going to have some puppies soon, so I'll be back on them again, and I'll. Or we hope to. We hope to, and I'll I'll try on. I'm keeping you know. my fingers crossed. So the problem with all of these things is when you come up with an idea and you want to develop it, you'd be surprised how long it takes. You have to have lots and lots of failures and fix them to get to a product that works properly. And I have a product that somewhat works, but it's not manufacturable yet. So maybe, maybe we'll get something that really makes sense. But that one, unfortunately, to me, doesn't make sense. I don't think much of it. Resident Jackson ordered a pregnancy test two weeks ago. I haven't received it yet. Um, well, I mean, I don't know what's going on with this, but certainly you've got to call Cody and get this sorted out. And Cody will find out what's up for you. 806-664-0173. Have your order number ready. Uh, Jay Spears, when do you start feeding your dog Bill Jack? Well, What's Bill that, Jack? Is, that Bill Jack is wonderful dog food. You find it in the freezer section. In California, you can't get it. Sorry. I don't know why, but they don't have it there. But it yeah. is in your in Walmart or Homeland. It'll be in your freezer section. With the human food. With the human food. So if you don't know where quite to look at, at Walmart, it's going to be cheaper, no doubt. Um, How much But ask that? somebody, people that work there at Walmart in the freezer section, where the Bill Jack is. It's kind of an orangish yellow bag, kind of like the yellow stripes on the highway, maybe a little more oranger. But anyway, it is in the frozen section. You want to keep it frozen until you're ready to use it. Thawed out when you're ready to use it and put it in the refrigerator, keep it in the refrigerator. So when to feed it, I usually like to try to introduce it to mama two weeks to a week before her due date on her babies. That way she's transitioning over to a new dog food. Very good for mama to eat. Has lots of good stuff in it. You know, the extra boost that she needs for feeding puppies and they love it. Uh, that, well, all mine I, have loved it. I think so. that's the secret there, isn't it? The problem you run into is that dogs lose their appetite. Yeah. And you don't want a skinny dog going into no, a well. No, you want no, a fat dog no. going into a well. And you keep mom, mama on it for, you know, at least three weeks when the babies are If you the don't, you, they, 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 they start to show their spine and they look, they blow their oh, coats yeah. and they look yeah, just horrible. Yeah, it helps keep their coat. Sometimes if you sprinkle goat's milk on it after mama's had babies, that's good to keep their hair from blowing. Give them some more calcium. Give them a little bit more calcium. Also, a little bit of cottage cheese for like three to four days at the most. Don't go too crazy. The cottage cheese. Yeah. Best, you? Oh yeah, it'd be yes. not not fun to clean up. So I think smell. you said where it's available. But anyway, so um, it is really good. But the three week limit on it when the puppies are three weeks is because the puppies are going to the bowl, licking on it. And if you're not paying attention and you've got a mama that doesn't like to share food. You may need to watch out for that. Yes. So uh, you transition her back over to, well, I'm going to say Life Abundance, which we sell on our website, and it's Life Abundance Puppy. It's a turquoise bag that you can find, and you order different sizes if you need it. Um, but anyway, so it's it's good to transition that over to that because you're going to be graduating those puppies to that also, along with the. Um, 
Royal the puppy moose, moose. Royal yeah. Canine. I wish Life Abundance would come up with a moose for puppies. So you can't get Bill Jack uh, west of the Rockies. No. And so what do you do if you're west of the Rockies? You have to move. That's it. No. You have to move no. to Oklahoma. No. No. Oh, that's not the answer. That's what's going on. Um, but I think the point here is um, that you are convinced it's not the only food you can feed your dogs. So don't panic because you can't find Bill Jack. Typically, a more moister, if you've got your dog on kibble and you transition to a more moister food, you'll find that they are more enticed to eat it. And sometimes hand feeding dogs can, can entice a dog to eat the Oh, yeah. Food. I, I usually just sit down. It's just like when a mama has a baby, there's those days that you've just got to. You know, forget the laundry, forget the groceries that day, sit down and hand feed right. your baby. Okay. Well, I'm your gonna, mama dog. We're going to run on this one. Okay. Bye, buddy. Thanks Bye. for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.